Welcome to Amari Music Talk. I'm Richard Cole, the Amari in Amari Communications. And just wanted to kind of give some quick thoughts on Diamonds and Pearls. Uh, it has been officially, at least the original album portion of the box set, has been released on your favorite streaming platform. Um, you also have the Dolby Atmos version that has been released on streaming as well. Uh, so I wanted to kind of give some quick thoughts about it. So this was very unexpected. Um, nice surprise, but um, didn't expect to do a review also. But here goes. Uh, first and foremost, I don't have a fancy Dolby Atmos system, uh, but it will be available on the Blu-ray of the Diamonds and Pearls box set. So, like I said, I don't have a system or anything now, but, you know, maybe, at least I'll have it, so by the time I get one, then I'll be able to listen to it. Um, so, with that in mind, I started just listening um, primarily in the car um, when it first dropped. And as a remaster I didn't you know right away didn't pick up on any of the nuances or any type of a wide range um, I don't know like I said just listening in in the car and like I said I don't have a fancy system it's just the factory thing so I don't know if I need to tweak some EQ some things to maybe take another listen to it um, but I will say by the time I got to cream that I noticed a bit of a difference. I noticed more, or well, actually more of a difference. Um, more range uh, within, you know, instruments and voice within the mix. Um, subtle nuances here and there. And I'm like, okay, so now, okay, now I'm starting to hear. Um, but what I found interesting is that while driving, I couldn't notice a, dis a difference and I'm not sure again if it was because it's but but like if you select you know it automatically knows that well you need a Dolby Atmos system in order to play this mix and it defaults to I guess whatever the regular album remaster or depends on um, I have title and I have Apple music so um, in the car I was listening on Apple music and I think at one point, like I said, the first few songs, it was while I was in motion that I really couldn't hear it. But then kind of once getting off the highway and then kind of by the first stoplight after that, then that was when Cream came on. And then it was like, oh, OK, I'm starting to, to, to notice a difference now. Uh, but again, that dynamic range. But um, as far as the car. Uh, listening to it the days since and as the album progressed then it's like okay yeah I kind of hear maybe more bass here in some spots maybe less bass in other spots um, you know and I just kind of made up my mind to say well you know I'll once I have the CD version uh, I can probably do a much better review on it um, but also to listening through earbuds on Tidal, uh, there is more, you can hear the definite remaster in virtually all of the songs at that point. Um, to me, I thought the vault tracks were, um, and again, I guess because it's lossless audio you know it's not Dolby Atmos or I don't know if they did a special Atmos mix for the ball tracks as well um, but to me I thought the mix was much better than the remaster but again it's listening in the car it's listening on earbuds and like I said I'll just you know wait until I get you know the actual box set and listen to the original album remaster on CD uh, to do a very proper review uh, but 
I will say there are certain songs that sound fresher than when I first got the original CD back in 1991. Um, like I said, it's it's not my favorite Prince album, uh, but there was a lot of stuff that I did enjoy. Um, like I said, I found myself now going back to listening to Get Off the way that I did back in 1991. Um, the album itself, the songs like Push, um, Money Don't Matter Tonight, Live for Love, that they, it does sound fresher to my ears now than listening to the original album all of these years. So I did find myself as of yesterday, you know, just making a short hop to the store and back that yeah it had a you know it it sounds fresher you know i i enjoy these tracks better now than i did back in 91 and i didn't mind them then i enjoyed them then you know those songs that i named those were sort of always standouts for me or highlights for me for that album surprisingly <laughs> surprisingly jughead sounds fresher to me like that was kind of one of the weaker songs for me and I always tended to over time skip that one uh, but the musicianship the groove on that is so infectious and it's given me a revelation that it's weird because you have Tony M rapping on it and it's not a problem that I have with the rap it's just that you know uh, reading that article in um, the magazine article I uh, forget the name of the classic pop magazine uh, reading that article and they do interview Tony M and in that interview he mentions that he was going for a Chuck D vibe in his rap tone and it's like that's that's what I feel is wrong with the song is that it's nothing against his rapping I mean it's a dance song and here's the thing because it really puts me more in line of digital underground because it's a dance song because you know with them they had Humpty Dance here you have the MPG with Jughead and it's like that's why it doesn't work because it's like public enemy trying to do digital underground and that's why it doesn't work to me as a track and it's like I kind of go it's like I separate the two because like I said there's nothing wrong with this rapping at all in that particular track it's just that if they had gone more for a shock G or Humpty Hump type tone with the rap, like just swap out the rappers. Like um, also, it, it also occurred to me too that um, like what I do like, or probably to me one of the highlights of Tony M's rapping to me is Call the Law. And it's like, yeah, I did enjoy that B side. You know, I did kind of enjoy it. And I also uh, used to watch the video and would enjoy the video a little bit, too. And it's like, oh, yeah, so, but that hasn't been previewed as a track. So I have to wait till it actually comes out before I can hear that. But that works more for his tone and his rap style than Jughead. I think that, you know, if it was a different universe, you know, if it was, a, it was a totally different universe and if Prince was the type of person to have been able to work well, then, you know, later on he was able to work with Chuck D or Dougie Fresh. Um, but if he was able to collaborate with Digital Underground or something like that, I think it would have worked better for that track being on that album. But, you know, it is what it is, but it's like the remaster because you have a wider range with the music, the instruments, that I hear all the different nuances and a better separation of the tracks. That, you know, I love that groove. I do love the groove of it now more than I did in 91. Um, Cause I kinda, it was just something like, okay, there's a groove there and I think I like it, but I don't know why I like it, but I don't like the song as a whole. But that's, that's what it is. I think it's 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 a mismatch that to me doesn't work. It's like I said, trying to ha it just imagine Public Enemy trying to do you know cover 
the Humpty Dance and you'll see where there's this chaos of errors. You know, I mean, granted, yeah, if you let Flavor Flav do the track solo, then yeah, Public Enemy doing the Humpty Dance could probably work on that level. But if you have Chuck D, you know, yeah, pronounced with an umpty. No, that's not gonna, it's not gonna carry. <laughs> it's, it's not going to carry over. So, but the remaster, I do love that instrumentation better. And I do, I, I don't fast forward it or skip it or anything anymore with the remaster because it's like I love the groove and I just kind of, you know, take the vocals as they are. You know, I understand what they were going for now and, you know, I don't know. I have to see the live version or hear the live version as well. See how that carries as well. But, uh, but it, either, you know, listening to it, the range of tracks, they work better. Um, I do enjoy it more. So it sounds fresher to my ears now and I have a different perspective. So, um, not that it may change my mind about where I place Diamonds and Pearls as an album, but I can find myself, and especially once this drops, probably listening to it more. But more on that when the box set actually comes out on October 27th. Um, but that's it. Um, my quick review of the streaming remastered version of the original Diamonds and Pearls album. Uh, what do you think so far? Do you enjoy it? Um, you know, are you trying to hold out and not listen to anything until the box set drops? Till you get your physical copy in your hands? Uh, leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. And that will end this episode. Uh, of course, remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, this was a quick little video. Another, not necessarily breaking news, but just kind of wanted to put my thoughts on this episode um, but Amari Music Talk I just started taping the actual first episode this week or this uh, actually last night to be exact I uh, have to do some edits uh, for that um, later in the week I will begin the Purple Notes Unveiled podcast start recording the first episode for that so become a Patreon supporter to catch the full version of that. Or if you just want to listen to the audio, it will be available on your favorite podcast platform. So, but until then, thank you for tuning in. And as always, create your day, create your life. Peace.